In 1953, a gentleman named Fritz Zernike won a Nobel Prize for his invention of a new type of microscope condenser and objective arrangement called phase contrast. Technically, phase contrast utilizes a ringed disc called an annulus, which fits below a standard bright field condenser. This ring, or annulus, is put into alignment with an optically matched ring that has been etched onto the inside lens of the magnification objective which sits above the slide. When the light coming from the condenser in this ring-like manner hits the ring etched into the objective above, there is a phase shift that occurs in the light and invisible particles become visible. Where dark field highlights the specimen against a black dark field and the specimen is essentially black and white, phase contrast highlights the specimen against a gray field and the specimen has a range of not just black and white, but it includes shades in between. This lighting ability often pulls out a higher level of cell definition and in many cases illustrates clearer cell morphology. Through its shading ability it can distinguish features of some cell walls that are indistinguishable using dark field alone. While high quality phase contrast does have its advantages, dark field has some of its own, particularly when viewing the tiniest particles in a specimen as these particles that are reflecting light against a dark background really jump out to the viewer. Using both phase contrast and dark field requires proper condenser adjustment and if improperly adjusted you will not get proper image quality. We cover these adjustment factors in our workshops and in additional video files that come with the microscopes. Now we have just talked about bright field, dark field, and phase contrast as three condenser lighting techniques. Let's talk about a fourth. Along the time of Zernike's Nobel Prize award for phase contrast, a man named Nomarski developed another method of contrast microscopy which offers a three-dimensional perspective. This aptly illustrates the dimensionality of a specimen. This technique is called Nomarski DIC, which means differential interference contrast. Slight variations of this technique can be accomplished as shown here using standard condensers configured for the technique. This has also been called relief contrast. Here we are looking at the dimensionality of the red blood cells and you can clearly see their natural donut shape appearance. We have just reviewed four different operational modes which a properly configured microscope can easily accomplish. We reviewed a standard Abbey condenser that can do some of these things by simply snapping the appropriate tool in place for the type of light you require, like popping in a phase annulus for phase contrast or a dark field stop for dark field. But wouldn't it be nice if we could just press a button and we could shift from bright field to dark field to phase contrast, then relief contrast, and back again to dark field if you wanted to? Well, you can, sort of. We do it with a universal condenser. This is a standard Abbey condenser to which has been added a turret that easily rotates and gives us bright field, dark field, phase, and relief contrast simply by rotating the turret to the appropriate spot. This offers optimum flexibility. Just like a standard bright field condenser, the turret condenser fits below the stage and fits into the condenser holder. You will note that with the wider turret in place, it is sometimes more difficult to get to the set screw with your fingers, so these condensers come with an extension tool that make the set screw easy to reach. With our condenser seated properly and in place, it is time to move our attention to the microscope objectives, which are screwed into position in a rotating turret above the stage. This turret, due to its proximity to your nose when you are looking into the microscope, is called the nose piece turret. The objectives contain the optical lenses that give you the ultimate magnification factors that the microscope can offer. Above the objective turret sits the eyepiece head assembly which holds the eyepiece oculars. These are the lenses that you look through to see your specimen. How much magnification you see is a function of your objective and ocular. Your objective power multiplied by your ocular power gives you the magnification. If you have a 40x objective in place and 10x oculars, you have 400 times magnification viewing through the eyepiece. With a 100x objective, you would have 1,000 times magnification. 
When you look at the barrel of a microscope objective, you will see the magnification or X factor printed along with some other notations. You might see the designation of pH 1, pH 2, or pH 3. This would mean that it is a phase contrast objective and you would need to rotate your turret condenser to the appropriate pH number which matches the pH number on the objective in order to get a proper focus and phase alignment. You will see another number following the magnification factor and the line might read something like 40x slash 0.65 or 100x slash 1.25. The second number refers to the numerical aperture of the lens. It's a bit complicated to explain, but basically it's a reference to the resolving power of the objective, or in other words, how much resolution is the objective capable of giving you. In microscopy, resolution means information. Resolution is the ability to magnify two parallel lines to a high degree while continuing to clearly see two distinct parallel lines without having them blur together and appear as one line. The higher the numerical aperture of an objective, the more expensive it becomes. In practical terms, the maximum amount of magnification that an optical microscope such as these can give you with optimum resolution is about 1500 times. This would be a microscope with 15x eyepieces and a 100x objective having a 1.5 numerical aperture. It's the 1.5 written on the side of the objective that tells you that you could theoretically use a 15x eyepiece and get all of the resolution the objective is able to give. If the numerical aperture was 1.25 on a 100x objective, then that basically tells you that you could go up to a 12.5x ocular and obtain all of the resolution the objective can give.